Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Um, before we get into the uh, official uh, debates, um, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land we're meeting on, the Ngunnawal people, and I acknowledge their uh, continuing culture and respect uh, the elders. <coughs> and I thank them very much for the contribution that they make to the life of this city. I want to welcome other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people that may be with us today. And uh, this, is the, this is the second Older Persons Assembly. The first assembly was held on the 30th of September 2011, and it, uh, from, it was the outcome of a 2010 Legislative Assembly resolution to hear and understand the key issues that affect the lives of older people and encourage, encourage older people to participate in policy development for, for the Australian Capital Territory. Delegates presented 24 recommendations to the government that focus on seven themes of ACT strategic plan for positive ageing 2010 to 2014. A report and government response to these recommendations prepared and tabled the Legislative Assembly Thank you very much. On the 21st of February 2012, outcomes of the 2011 Older Persons Assembly guided development of the 2012 and 2014 Positive right. Ageing uh, Action Plan. And so now here we are today for the 2014 Older Persons Assembly. And I'd like to particularly acknowledge um, Auntie Agnes, who will be um, welcoming this country very shortly. Thank you, Auntie Agnes, uh, the former. The former Chief Minister, Rosemary Follett. Welcome, um, Minister Gentleman, and uh, Shadow Minister, um, Mr Dospot. So welcome everybody to the uh, 2014 Older Persons Assembly. The community consultation forums were very informative, I'm told, and successful in providing people with the opportunity to discuss issues, highlighting positive outcomes and share the concerns of seniors across the themes of age-friendly cities, social inclusion and health, healthy ageing. Over 120 people have attended these forums. Three motions were drafted by the Older Persons Assembly Steering Committee from these consultations. Infrastructure for age-friendly cities, which we will be dealing with firstly, transport for age-friendly cities and connecting an age-friendly city. It is proposed that the motions to be debated at the Assembly today will inform the development of the next version of the ACT Positive Ageing Plan 2015-2017. I'm sure some of you today who did not manage to attend one of the seven community consultations may have other issues that you wish to raise and bring to uh, the Assembly. We have provided you with two opportunities to do that during the general discussion, which is programmed at 12.20. Uh, and addition, and in, additionally, we encourage you to talk to the Ministerial Council on Ageing during the breaks, who can be identified by their green name badges. I know you have received a great deal of information during the past weeks regarding today's proceedings, just to remind you that everything you, you need is in your information packs that you received at registration. To ensure that everyone gets a chance to speak, today you will be timed by a timekeeper and, two, and everyone has two minutes to speak. Uh, a bell will ring when you actually reach the two minutes. You'll see clocks on either side that you'll be able to watch um, and you'll get a 10 second uh, warning, I believe, when your two minutes is uh, about to expire. Um, when your time has expired, I will just say your time has expired and ask you to sit down. So we're going to be very strict like we are usually uh, in this place with, um, with members' timing, so you won't have an opportunity to keep on talking once your time has expired. Please ensure you have a copy of the resolution to be discussed in front of you and if you have made your, and you've made yourself familiar with the modified standing orders and the glossary of terms that you all received. If you wish to speak, you'll need to raise your hand and I will indicate to, to you that you are acknowledged and you will need to move to uh, the microphones that are either side of the room that are being pointed out to you at the moment. 
I will only recognise you once in each debate. I'm not going to give people multiple opportunities to speak um, to, uh, to, a, to the motion because, as you see, there are a lot of people in this room, and if I do do that, then other people will miss out. So you'll have an opportunity to speak to other motions later in the day. Uh, the standing orders tell you what will happen to you if you ignore the ruling. Ms. Ms. My colleague, Mr. Gentleman, uh, Minister for Ageing, will round up the debates of Resolution 1 and 3, and Minister Shane Rattenbury will do the same for Resolution 2. And I encourage you during the breaks today to mingle and get to know each other, and above all, I hope that you have a very stimulating and enjoyable day. Um, I now call on Ms. Agnes Shea our respected Ngunnawal elder to welcome us to country. Thank you, Auntie Agnes. Today, to welcome you, first of all, to this special and wonderful event, but also to Ngunnawal country. All of you are elders of this great multicultural community in which we all live. Today, you meet here in this chamber as an assembly of elders to speak openly as equals and to provide the wisdom of your years to others. I would like to welcome you all to Ngunnawal country, the land of our ancestors and our children. I acknowledge our host, Deputy Speaker of the ACT Legislation Assembly, Mary Porter, MLA, and the ACT Minister for Ageing, Mick Gem Gentleman, MLA, Rosemary Follard, Natalie Howson, and other distinguished guests. I would particularly like to acknowledge the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island delegates who are part of this assembly today. Welcome to Ngunnawal country as delegates of this historical assembly, the second of its kind for Canberra. Be very proud that you have been chosen to represent thousands of other older Canberrans here today. Elders have always been important people in our Aboriginal community. They have important roles in how the community works and how the community relates with those outside of their communities, including government agencies and service providers. Elders are respected in Aboriginal communities across this great nation and have an important role in guiding the next generation by imparting wisdom and advice. Some elders, like me, are traditional owners of our land, our nation. The Ngunnawal people <coughs> were the first inhabitants of this land we now call Canberra. And, and now I'd like to explain the meaning of a welcome. The tradition of welcoming people is a cultural practice and that was handed down by our old people from the beginning of time. And what it means, before entering another person's country, you would always announce your arrival and not enter until a traditional owner of that country welcomes you. And the reason for this practice is to protect your spirit while you're in another person's country, but also show respect to the people of the country you're entering. And as one of the Ngunnawal elders, I'm always very, very proud when non-Indigenous organisations and government do ask an elder to come and do welcome to country. It shows that they are also respecting our traditional culture. And it helps to build the reconciliation and bring respect between many cultures of people who now live in the ACT and region, but also throughout Australia. 
So I thank you all again for giving me the honour to come here today. And I do this on behalf of all the other Ngunnawal families. Please enjoy the rest of the morning and thank you all. Thank you. I now call on the Minister for Ageing, <clears throat> Minister Gentleman. Well, thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. It's a pleasure to be with you all here today. And can I, uh, too, acknowledge that we're meeting on the lands of the Ngunnawal people, the traditional owners, and thank Auntie Agnes for her wonderful welcome and, of course, those Ngunnawal words, Nagana Yerabai Yangu. In addition to the traditional custodians of this land, I'd also like to acknowledge and welcome our keynote speaker, Ms Rosemary Follett, uh, members of the ACT Legislative Assembly, including our OPA speaker, uh, Ms Mary Porter, Deputy Speaker, and uh, Dr Chris Burke and Nicole Lauder, along with Steve Dospot. And um, Steve, as you know, is the Shadow uh, Minister for Ageing in the Assembly. As Madam Deputy Speaker read out the rules about interjecting across the chamber today, we both smiled at each other and recognised uh, what we need to do here. Also, ministers of the ACT uh, Ministerial Advising Council on Ageing, members of the Older Persons Assembly Steering Committee, director generals from ACT government directories, delegates of the second <coughs> Older Persons Assembly, and other distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and there's many faces uh, I see here today that I've known for quite a long time in the Territory. As the Minister for Ageing, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to the ACT Legislative Assembly for the second Older Persons Assembly. Just yesterday, I attended and delivered a speech at the special ceremony within our National Arboretum to dedicate what is known as Forest 40 in recognition of the contribution of older Australians to the Australian Capital Territory. Uh, what has been created can simply be described as a sanctuary amongst the forest of cypress trees, uh, complete with an impressive handmade cypress timber bench on which to sit and rest, uh, a quiet place for reflection and to simply take in the sights and the scents of the forest. All of the trees at the Arboretum share a common characteristic. Some will grow tall, uh, some only short, some will have stretching branches and extremely long roots, while others will be more reserved in the space that they take up. Despite these differences, all of the Arboretum trees will show their age and experience through the thickening bark and the lengthening roots. They will act as care and shelter for other inhabitants of the Arboretum. And as older people, we are, share uh, an affinity with the trees at the Arboretum. We have grown and have matured and have displayed resilience over the years and an ability to weather the storms of life and endure the changing seasons. On this special day here in the ACT Assembly, you've all become tall timbers within the ACT seniors community, representing a forest of thoughts, wisdom, motivation and passion. And today is also a significant day in the global calendar as it marks the day on which we observe the International Day of Older Persons, celebrating the contribution of older people in their respective communities and the importance of their roles within the world. It's fitting that this element of the ACT Parliamentary Agreement falls on this global day of celebration. In this chamber today, uh, there is a collective wealth of knowledge and experience. As delegates of the Second Older Persons Assembly today, each of you are representing thousands of older Canberrans across the ACT through your attendance, your active participation in debates and contributions generally. Today also represents a complete reversal of roles. ACT politicians and government policy makers and observers from the seniors community who are present in this chamber will listen to your ideas, your concerns and importantly the substance of your debates in each resolution as you deal with it. When this day of debate is completed, we'll move forward in partnership to plan and implement programs and policies that will bring about a better life and future for all older persons who reside in the Australian Capital Territory. The ACT's current population is climbing steadily and currently exceeds 380,000 people. 
Uh, when I was born here in the ACT, there was about 21,000 people. So we've certainly grown. <laughs> we've also one of the Australia's fastest growing population of older people, with predictions that by the year 2020, uh, which is realistically not that far away, our population will exceed 400,000 people, with approximately 20% of our population, or one person in every five, being 65 years of age or older. And as you look around the chamber this morning, you'll see that your fellow delegates span different generations. The ACT government recognises that every generation has its own set of life experiences and its own set of needs uh, now and into the future. To respond to these changing demographics, the government made a commitment almost a decade ago to promote what we call positive ageing and to work towards the creation of what is now termed across the world as an age-friendly city. The term describes a city that is constantly evolving and is being shaped and refined to become an environment that will provide older persons with an exceptional quality of life, where freedom of access, personal security, social harmony and the right to feel valued and respected are woven into the social fabric of their community. <coughs> In the context of planning, an age-friendly city incorporates design features and recreational facilities that encourage older people to remain physically and socially active to remain uh, in a healthy lifestyle, to be socially engaged and to explore opportunities that will provide new life experiences as they age. Canberra's journey upon the age-friendly highway began just five years ago and has passed many exciting milestones along the way. In 2009, the ACT government released the 2010-2014 Strategic Plan for Positive Ageing, a document which turned the key that ignited our age-friendly engine and set the wheels in motion. In June 2010, we passed another significant milestone into the journey when we accorded member status of the World Health Organization's global network of age-friendly cities, joining over 50 other cities, including New York, Manchester and Brussels. <coughs> this was a great achievement for Canberra and it served to reinforce the government's commitment in taking active steps to support our older citizens. In October 2012, uh, we held Australia's inaugural Older Persons Assembly. No, that was 2011, right here in the chamber. And I believe there's a handful of people who are with us today who were delegates or observers at that event. It was a first for Canberra and a first for Australia, with only Scotland beating us to the mark uh, just two years earlier. But we didn't rest on our laurels for long. In October 2013, we created history again by staging Australia's first national conference of age-friendly cities and communities, uh, bringing together five state and territory governments and over 40 local government jurisdictions across our nation. In the aftermath of this highly successful conference, we created the Australian Network of Age-Friendly Cities and Communities, which continues to flourish and attract new members, providing a conduit to exchange information, ideas and best practice principles among its members. As the ACT continues to pass these significant milestones upon the age-friendly highway, we've stopped frequently and purposely to pick up some new ideas that will inform and provide the concepts, initiatives and programs that will benefit older Canberrans. This approach was used during our extensive community consultation process, leading to the formation of this assembly and providing a conduit for the selection and participation of many of our delegates to this chamber. The fruits of our community consultation process have also been the genesis of where we are today. A dedicated, passionate and motivated steering committee then had the task of harvesting and sorting through the ideas that we reaped from our consultation forums. The essence that's flowed from that has been refined and distilled and has been carefully shaped and crafted into three resolutions which you'll debate in the Assembly today. I encourage you all to think creatively and outside the square about the content of the resolutions that are before you. The substance of what emerges from your debates will influence the future planning requirements and needs of older Canberrans in the next decade. I'd also ask for your cooperation and application in addressing the resolutions in an orderly and methodical manner 
as Madam Deputy Speaker said, no interjections across the chamber. It's my intention to be with you throughout the debating process in this assembly today and uh, as you progress your consideration of the re resolutions. I'll take this opportunity to provide you uh, uh, a summary of each resolution in the same way I would as a, the Minister for Ageing in the Legislative Assembly when introducing legislation or addressing matters of public importance to members of the Assembly. The first resolution that will be introduced today concerns infrastructure for an age-friendly city. This resolution is about improving the infrastructure assets across Canberra, including streets and roads, uh, seating at bus stops and other public places, <coughs> street lighting, footpaths, recreational facilities and to work with men's sheds uh, in the Territory. Men's sheds are an important community facility, providing a focal point for men to come together and discuss issues that are important to them. They also represent an important investment in supporting men, especially older men, to keep engaged with friends and meet new friends through the activity of tinkering in the shed. And we recognise the ACT has an ageing population, which means that the ACT government has to provide facilities that meet the needs of our changing demographic. Men's sheds are a way to achieve this. And that's also why we'll soon be announcing details of an ACT men's shed grants program with over $100,000 in available grants funding. These will provide eligible applicants with support to either start up new sheds or enhance the existing ones. In the 2014-15 ACT budget, an allocation was made to ACT roads to address the age friendliness uh, infrastructure of two initial pilot suburbs one located on the north side and the other on the south side of the city. This resolution is about placing a value upon these infrastructure assets and ensuring that they're used effectively by older Canberrans. The end result is that older Canberrans will gain a significant improvement in their health status, general well-being, and in the context of overall active ageing outcomes. A well-designed physical environment will support older people in allowing them to make a positive and continuing contribution to their community, bringing benefits to them on a personal level and also to society in general. Our second resolution today is transport for an age-friendly city. Our goal is to develop affordable and sustainable public and community sector transport options for the city. Currently, we have a city characterised by residential areas spread very broadly across the city's landscape and which only feature uh, low population density. We need to recognise that this issue presents significant challenges to the ACT government uh, for public and private sector providers of transport and all Canberrans, regardless of age. Some progress has been made in this area, including the adoption of a responsive approach by action and the positive efforts being made to improve the level of understanding of the current bus system by CODA ACT through its Transport Buddy program. Other initiatives within the community transport sector also include the introduction of light rail as the spine of our future public transport system and forming the centrepiece in the transformation of our city centre. The Capital Metro Agency will become far more visible on our city landscape as it ramps up work uh, in its program of planning and consultation in the not too distant future. I look forward to hearing uh, the thoughts of this assembly on this resolution and working with my parliamentary colleagues towards better transport outcomes for the senior community and of course the community in general. Now our third and final resolution today is connecting an age friendly city. This resolution goes to the heart of the information and digital revolution and the associated impact and challenges faced by older Canberrans as they attempt to access pertinent and relevant information online. The ACT government, community organisations and a plethora of other agencies have made considerable efforts in overcoming these barriers to provide information and advice to seniors using both online services and through the provision of hard copies. Despite these efforts, it's considered that the pace and complexity of information technology revolution will cause increasing problems for older Canberrans into the future, 
particularly as the ratio of older people in our population continues to increase. Access to training and the use of computer technology for older Canberrans can address some of the issues and reduce the incidence of social isolation. The challenge is to ensure that access to training is adequate and that older Canberrans can be kept up to date in the use of new information technologies in their everyday lives. This third resolution proposes a constructive approach to address these issues. As delegates of the Assembly, you're being asked today to consider outcomes of an extensive community consultation process and to recognise that broad-ranging responses to ageing issues within the ACT uh, population is high on the government's agenda. On behalf of the ACT government and the people of the ACT, I thank you for your commitment, your involvement and your passion. And I wish you every success in your debates and the consideration of the resolutions before you today. I now have the great pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker uh, for this assembly, Ms Rosemary Follett, AO. Rosemary holds the honour of being the first woman to become head of government in any Australian state or territory. She was elected as Chief Minister and Treasurer in 1989 in the ACT's first Legislative Assembly and was re-elected from 91 to 95, serving as Chief Minister again from uh, 92 until 1995. Her portfolio responsibilities included all aspects of social justice and she introduced laws governing occupational health and safety, discrimination and harassment and protection of domestic relationships. On leaving politics, Ms Follett was the ACT's Discrimination Commissioner and Head of the ACT's Human Rights Office from 1996 to 2004. She since served on a wide range of boards and committees. In 2006, she was made an Officer of the Order of Australia and was accorded an honorary doctorate from the University of Canberra earlier this year. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, would you please extend a very warm welcome to our keynote speaker, Ms Rosemary Follett, AO. Good morning, everybody. Um, this is Agnes Shea, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, Mary Porter, Minister McGentleman, members of the Assembly, Mr Dospot, I see there, um, and the Director, the Government Director, Natalie Howson, and uh, our delegates and observers for this second Older Persons Assembly and other distinguished guests. I'll begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land that we're meeting on, the Ngunnawal people. I acknowledge and respect their continuing culture and the contribution that they make to the life of this city and this region and I sincerely thank Auntie Agnes Shea for her inspiring welcome to country. Um, I'd like to thank you also, Minister, for your introduction. And I'll say right at the outset that I feel very honoured and actually very excited to be back in this Assembly Chamber. And without so much as a pre-selection, let alone an election, to get here. It's wonderful. Many of you will remember the early days of the ACT's self-government perhaps with less than affection. For my part, the difficulties and the frequent embarrassments of those early days could never be overlooked. However, my abiding and long-held commitment to democracy, a fair say for the people of the ACT in the matters that concern them, always won out. And I can see that you share a passion for democracy by your presence today. As the ACT Assembly has matured over the quarter century of its history, the teething troubles have almost faded from my memory. Well, almost. <laughs> but what has never diminished for me is the great honour and the unique experience of being the ACT's first Chief Minister. I can still hardly believe that that really did happen, and it happened to me. Like many delegates in the Assembly Chamber this morning, I'm unashamedly a baby boomer, being born during that immediate post-war era of economic and social recovery when our nation and indeed this city were undergoing rapid change and growth. 
My family came to Canberra to live when I was just a toddler. We came for two main reasons. First, Dad got a good job here. And second, that job came with a government house. Coming from post-war Sydney, which was suffering from an acute shortage of housing, let alone affordable housing, um, the latter reason, which turned out to be a little govy um, in the then outer suburb of Yarralumla, that was the clincher. Life was very different for us back then, in so many respects and for so many reasons. Some would say that our lives had a different set of challenges, <coughs> that there was less stress, less pressure, that life was less complex. And one of my fondest childhood memories of life in Canberra is of my sisters and me roaming all day long, all day, in the paddocks, the hills and even the streets of Canberra. You can picture this. We collected with equal enthusiasm stamps for our stamp albums from the growing number of foreign embassies in our area, mushrooms from the paddocks for the table, it never occurred to us not to eat them, we just did. And, and or, of course, manure, to, to wit, cowpats, for Dad's lovely garden. So you can picture those three little girls racing around with bundles of something you don't like to ask what it was some of the time. I'm sure that many of you share similar memories of freedom and innocence uh, that we enjoyed in our youth. Perhaps others of you have come to Canberra from war-torn countries, subject to oppression and deprivation. And I hope that, like me, you have experienced many of the truly great things that Canberra has to offer. Wonderful education opportunities at all levels and across all different systems, a very diverse system of world class. Employment opportunities for pretty much anybody who seriously wants a, a job in Canberra, generally speaking, can get it. We've had our setbacks, of course. We may be having one now, but we always come through. We also hope that that employment will be free from discrimination and harassment, and that it will have secure and rewarding outcomes. We enjoy also the fabulous cultural and sporting facilities, and equally importantly, our city is small enough and well organised enough that we can actually get around to all of those things. Our environment, of course, speaks for itself. We are the bush capital, a place of great natural beauty. We're a modern, multicultural and proud community has grown and continues to grow. And so here we all are, growing old, in this wonderful place. It's probably pretty obvious that I love Canberra, and uh, I think probably all of you do too. But even I think from time to time, what about as I get older? Where will I live? Can I afford to stay here? How will I get around when I can't drive my own car? So today is a very significant day. It's the 1st of October, International Day of Older Persons, and a chance for all of us to take stock and to plan for our future. You have each given a commitment to take on a new role as a senior politician for the day, representing your constituents, thousands of older Canberrans. And you'll shortly commence debating resolutions that will ultimately set the wheels in motion to improve the lives and well-being of older Canberrans. I join the Minister, indeed, indeed all members of the Assembly and the ACT Government, in thanking you for your commitment, your involvement, your passion. You remind me of something that Eleanor Roosevelt, who is something of a heroine of mine, said in her memoirs. She said, I could not at any age be content to take my place by the fireside and simply look on at all things. Life was meant to be lived. Curiosity must be kept alive. One must never, for whatever reason, turn their back on life. For many older Australians, the third age, as we commonly call it, is that important chapter of life when you cease full-time work 
and you have the capacity to pursue other interests and other passions. It's also a time of opportunity and renewal. For most of us, it means liberation from family and financial responsibilities, giving us more time to participate in educational, recreational and cultural pursuits and voluntary work in our community. With the life expectancy of Australians now amongst the highest in the developed world, one of the challenges that governments and broader communities must face is in providing meaningful activity to support our ageing population, to encourage social participation so that they can remain physically and mentally active and to ensure that they have a good quality of life. The ACT government and indeed the ACT community share the same challenge as other Australian state and local governments and indeed the Commonwealth Government as well. And that challenge is Australia's ageing population. It's a reality that we must all embrace as a territory and as a nation. But importantly, I think we must embrace this not with despair and gloom, but with a sense of purpose and optimism so that we can transform this reality from a challenge to a positive outcome for older Australians. We must learn to work together and to learn from each other by harnessing our ideas, our concepts, our plans, innovation and importantly, our passion and our commitment and move forward with a sense of purpose to create age-friendly Canberra. And although some of you might disagree, I believe that an age-friendly city can only be created if three essential pillars are firmly in place to form a solid and structured foundation. These pillars are an age-friendly living environment. We've heard the minister talk about what that might comprise. And a sense of place and a sense of belonging. The living environment, as I've said, includes all the physical characteristics and features that are necessary to ensure that an older person can maintain their quality of life within their community with comfort, with dignity and with access. A sense of place and a sense of belonging are also the values that are sacred to the traditional custodians of our Great South Land and the same values that are treasured and sacred to other Australians, and I'm sure to many of you. For older Canberrans, a sense of place and a sense of belonging are the pillars that contain that social cement that's vital and essential to allow us to live our lives with respect, dignity, purpose, and to our fullest potential. Australia's growing longevity is something to prepare for and at the same time it's something to celebrate. It's a wonderful thing. In our endeavours to build and create a more age-friendly Canberra, we, we must all, as a community, as a parliament, work together in mutual respect, collaboration and partnership to achieve this goal. <coughs> I thoroughly commend you for being part of this special assembly. I wish you well in your deliberations. And I trust and I fully expect that your recommendations will be well received and acted on for the benefit of our Canberra community. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rosemary. That was, that was wonderful. I'm sure all of us are very inspired by your words.